In section 8.1, we'll be talking about sequences. A sequence can be thought of as a list of numbers written in a definite order, starting with A subscript 1, A subscript 2, all the way to A subscript N. The number A subscript 1 is called the first term of that sequence. A subscript 2 is the second term. And in general, A subscript N is the nth term. We will deal exclusively with infinite sequences. And so each term, A subscript N, will have a successor, A subscript N plus 1. Now notice that for every positive integer N, there is a corresponding number, A subscript N, and so a sequence can be defined as a function whose domain is the set of positive integers. But we usually write A subscript N instead of the function notation F of N for the value of the function at the number N. So the notation, the sequence of the set A subscript 1, A subscript 2, A subscript 3, dot 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 and so on, is also denoted by the following. We can say that we have the set of A subscript N, or we have the set of A subscript N, where N is equal to 1 and goes to infinity. Now in example number 1, we're describing sequences. Now some sequences can be defined by giving a formula for the nth term. In the following examples, we give three descriptions of the sequence. One by using the preceding notation, another by using the defining formula, and the third by writing out the terms of the sequence. And notice that n does not have to start at 1. So if we look at a, we have the set of n divided by n plus 1, where n is equal to 1 that goes to infinity. So this is the preceding notation. Here is the defining formula a subscript n, which is equal to n divided by n plus 1. And then the third over here is writing out the terms of the sequence. And so showing how we can start with a couple values, when n is equal to 1, the first term a subscript 1, we plug in 1 for n. We get 1 over 1 plus 1, which is equal to 1 half, which then gives us the first term of this sequence. And then next we have n is equal to 2. So a subscript 2 is going to equal the value of n, which is 2. So it's 2 over 2 plus 1, which is equal to 2 thirds. And then we would continue on to determine the terms of this sequence. For part b, we have a set that states negative 1 to the nth power times n plus 1 divided by 3 to the nth power. Writing it as a formula, a to the n is equal to this form. And then let's go ahead and determine the first and the second sequence, the first and second terms of the sequence. So for when n is equal to 1, we're plugging 1 in for n, and evaluate, and we get negative 2 thirds, which is the first term of this sequence. Next, if we let n is equal to 2, we're going to plug 2 in for n, and we get 3 ninths, which then becomes the second term of the sequence, and so on. Next, we have the set of the square root of n minus 3, where the sequence starts at n is equal to 3 and approaches infinity. So here we have a subscript n, which is equal to the square root of n minus 3, where n has to be greater than or equal to 3 because that's where we have to start. So now the first term of this sequence is when n is equal to 3. If we plug in 3, we get a value of 0, so therefore that is the first term of the sequence. If we plug in the next value after n, which is 4, then we get 1, and therefore that would be the second term of the sequence, and so on. Now, in part d, we have the set of cosine of n times infinity divided by 6 when n is equal to 0 and approaches infinity. So here is the formula. So let's find out what the first term of this sequence is. So when n is equal to 0, we're looking for a of 0. 
we plug in zero for n, the cosine of zero is equal to one, so therefore there is the first term of the sequence. Next we have n is equal to one, so we have a subscript one, which this represents the second term of the sequence. So we get the cosine of one times pi over six, which is cosine of pi over six, which is the square root of three over two, and then we would continue on to determine the rest of the sequence.